Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On this video, I'm probably going to be showing you more than you even want to know about Smash Burgers. Let's get going. So this is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time. I've done so many copycats and I've used so many techniques that I've learned from doing those copycats. I just kind of wanted to throw a bunch of them into one video. So this video is all about smashed burgers. So as this video progresses, I'm going to be showing you the different type of tools, spatulas, you know, flippers and everything you're going to want for doing a really good smash burger. But first things first, you definitely want a cooking surface that is not non-stick. So you want to use, you know, high carbon steel, cast iron, or stainless steel that again has not been treated with a non-stick surface. Skillets are fine. You're going to see a lot of these techniques. Uh, skillets just not going to work because of the limitations of size and also the walls become a hindrance. Um, a flat top is the best. I'm using you know my Blackstone here. Um, if you don't you know want to buy or you don't have a big Blackstone uh, stove top you know, plancha, like little griddle is fine. I have, uh, actually I came out with the Ballistic Griddle, which Craycord is selling, and also the Ballistic Mojo, which is, you know, a 18 inch diameter flat top, fits on a kettle grill. Mojo Outfitters is selling that. Um, you just want a nice flat top. And again, for doing some of these techniques, you, <laughs> you're gonna need some room. Let's get started. So for this first burger, I'm going to show you how they do it at the Bop and Grill. This, by the way, is my good luck burger hat from Dino's Bar and Grill in Nashville. Check those guys out. Old school dive, great burgers. So I have here a four ounce ball of 80-20 ground chuck. Go to, you guys, 80-20. If you're going to make a good burger, it has to at least be 80-20, 20% fat, 80% lean. Now, as far as the griddle's concerned, you want a medium high heat. So that translates to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> so just to keep things simple, I'm using the same seasoning on all these burgers, just salt, pepper, garlic. But at the very least, these places that make these iconic burgers, it's gonna be just salt. And usually the most is gonna be salt and pepper. So what I'm doing now is I have the ball on the griddle and I'm allowing the heat to kind of go up through the meatball, kind of soften it up a little bit. Now the bop and grill actually seasons it while it's still in that meatball state. Spatula is very important. You want a short handled spatula, thick steel. You don't want one of those real flexible spatulas and you don't want any holes in it. This is like a commercial spatula that they'd be using, you know, at a burger restaurant. And you definitely want a beveled edge because a good smashed burger is actually going to bond with that non-stick surface and you want to have to scrape it off. You get all that good crust that way. So the meatball's heated up now, so we're going to go ahead and smash it. Most of these burger places, they're cooking so many burgers, their spatulas get fairly warm. Heat it up a little bit. It'll keep the meat from sticking on the spatula. You don't want it searing hot, just get it you know, warmed. It's actually like 6.45 in the morning right now, so coffee. Now you can see there's little holes forming here and there's juices boiling up through those holes. It's time to flip. You want to hold the spatula down at an angle and scrape the burger patty off. There you go. And this crust is why you smash burgers. Now, once you flip, it's time if you want to add cheese to add cheese because these burgers cook quickly. You're going to do a legit diner style burger. It's going to be American cheese. Get a lot of crap for using this stuff. Plastic cheese. Let me show you this. This is the stuff I like to use. And this is the Deli Deluxe. And you can see right down there it says 
pasteurized American cheese. The other stuff that's individually wrapped in the plastic, it's, it's cheese product. So, you know what? This stuff is actually invented in France. Um, so this says cheese, it's actually cheese. It's just processed cheese. We got a good milk going. First down. I'm gonna do a more old school burger from Shoops in Chicago. They also have some locations in Indiana now. They started in 1948, I believe. And they use about the same amount of meat, about four ounces, um, but they form theirs more in a kind of a, a thick puck. Same thing, 80-20. So I've got it down again. We always wanna kind of preheat the ball just a little bit before we do the smash. Now Shoops uses a trowel spatula. This is a bricklayer's trowel where you just simply cut off that, you know, that pointed portion and then grind it to a nice bevel. You can make your own by the buy a trowel at you know Home Depot, wherever, and just take an angle grinder and cut it off, smooth it out. These are nice because there's zero flex. You don't want any flex on a good burger smash. Okay, once you've let it preheat a little bit, going to flip it, then we're going to smash it. And they kind of smooth it out. They go really, really thin. One of the nice thing about a smash burger is a burger like this, you're going to get some hangover on the on the bun. It's to go fast. It's very thin. You don't need to season both sides. A little seasoning on there. Now again, holes all over the place here. This is where we're going to take another Home Depot tool. I actually like a you know a bigger scraper or like a taping knife for drywall. Uh, I couldn't find my bigger one, so. Maybe I probably patched up a wall over there or something. This is a great tool for scraping the burger off of the flat top here. So again, cheese down. This is going to be a kind of an homage to a burger they have there called the Mickey. So I'm going to flip the heel over. Second slice of cheese. It's got a good melt going on. Steaming hot, it'll melt this bottom portion of cheese here. Top bun. Again, Chicago, what are you guys doing with all the smash burgers? We're going to replicate the technique of the Red Hot Ranch killer burger. Four ounces, 80-20. Again, we're letting it kind of preheat. They smash theirs with this thing here. A nice heavy piece of stainless steel. It's called a steak weight. If you buy it online. I'll have a link down below. I'm going to preheat it a little bit because it's kind of chilly. This is truly one of my favorites. I just I love this technique. So again, it's preheated. It's nice and soft. You can actually see it's kind of glistening a little bit now. Smash it straight down and then smooth it off, kind of twist off. Season it. All right, yeah, juice is bubbling through. And look at that. Now we're going to do one of the most one of the most common smash techniques. It's called the four corner press. It's going to form our patty. And then press this corner. And you can do this by the way with an already formed patty that's just not quite as thin as you want it. Press the top corner. 
lower two. And actually, this is what Wendy's used to do before Dave died. They stopped doing it for some reason. But the whole point of having that square patty was Dave wanted the uh, beef to hang out over the sides, so he made them square. Then you would flatten each corner out. Little seasoning. Again, you want, when you put your spatula underneath there and start lifting it, you want there to be a lot of resistance. You have to peel the meat off of the grill. Now we're going to smash the burger the way Shake Shack smashes it. All right, for this technique, you need two spatulas. And you'll see the different cooks at Shake Shack do it two different ways, but basically what you're doing is placing the spatula down and then assisting this so you're getting a nice even press. Some of those cooks will press it with the blade and others you'll see with the handle. It doesn't really matter. You don't even really need a spatula. You just need something else to press it down with. Ten seconds. Then I always say, instead of lifting the spatula straight off, kind of pull it off. You run the risk of the beef, some of the beef sticking, you know, to the bottom of the spatula. Then again, we'll season. Wow. Now we're going to do the technique from Smashburger, the restaurant Smashburger, one word. Right again, four ounce patty down. Let it heat up just a little bit. Now Smash Burger uses a smasher. It's just basically a device that you know gauges it. It's a perfectly flat smash. It's got a little rim in here. When I was doing my copycat, they actually let me come into the kitchen and I measured the rim and everything. All those, their, their smasher has more of a kind of a rosetta form. A buddy of mine made a simple circular one with a quarter inch rim. And now uh, Craycord is making these under the name the Ballistic Smasher. And we have different depths and sizes of these as well. So a piece of like burger parchment, you can just use regular parchment paper cut to a square. Smash it straight down. Hold it for 10 seconds. Now, so you can see the difference of some of the smashers we're selling through Cray Court. I'm going to use, uh, this is the really thin one, like five millimeters thick rim here, but it gives you a really nice flat smash burger. And this is the thickest version. Gives you a big, thick patty, but you still get that nice, you know, flattened sear. For this, honestly, I, I would want to use more than four ounces. This is going to be a very small patty in diameter. This is like more for an eight ounce burger. But you can see how thick it is. Season.
Now again, I just wanted you to kind of see how thick of a burger you could make with still getting that nice sear, but that is a smasher for a large burger. I mean, minimum eight ounce uh, of beef. Now this next technique I'm going to show you, I call the El Reno smash, and this is what those iconic onion burgers out of El Reno, Oklahoma use. Johnny's, Sid's Diner, Robert's, and uh, they use the old school homemade trowel spatula. So we're gonna go ahead and lay that down. I'm gonna let it preheat just a little bit. Now this particular technique, you need some real estate because it's very physical, it's almost violent. Um, if you wanna do this technique, you're not going to be able to do it in like a little cast iron skillet. Uh, at the very least, like a stove top, you know, cast iron griddle. Or the ballistic griddle, the ballistic mojo. This is one where you want to kind of preheat that spatula so it doesn't stick because you're whaling on this, this uh, patty here. And I will be doing an onion burger, an Oklahoma onion burger on my Ballistic Burgers channel. I have one that is actually a pretty accurate video, but it's old on Ballistic Burger or Ballistic Barbecue. So, you know, my production's increased a lot. All right. So we've kind of preheated this meatball. Again, four ounces, 80-20. We're gonna beat the crap out of this poor meatball. There you go. And we're gonna season it. Now, these, these restaurants, I don't, these grills, these burger joints in El Reno that do this, they're fantastic. And um, like I said, my video that I did years ago, I did a lot of research on it, but I hadn't had the opportunity to go to any of these places. I was gleaming my information from videos of them cooking these burgers. My good buddy Cosmo over there at Cosmo Q's, he, he grew up in El Reno, he worked at Roberts, and I had the pleasure of going to Roberts and Sid's with uh, Cosmo. He actually cooked these as a kid, you know, working at Roberts. Um, so. The next video I do will be, I think, a lot better. So we're ready to flip. Now they do something which you would, I think, probably get a lot of comments, like negative comments, but they give it another press after the flip. So again, this is how they would do their non-onion burgers there. Now, last but not least, I want to just show you the most basic of the smash techniques, and there is absolutely nothing wrong in doing this. And that's just, you have your burger patties that you made, you put them on the flat top, and then you just give it a press. Just, you don't want to really smash it down, you know, like a really thin smash burger. This is, the only thing I'm really trying to do here is get that burger to, you know, bond and get a nice even crust. Now, again, it's flattened, now I'm gonna pull the spatula off. It doesn't take very long. And now the other thing that's nice is I have a perfectly flat upside now. So when I do flip it, I'll get some good crust on that side as well. Okay, I've got the color. This is a thicker patty than those more traditional smashes. So I've got the color kind of starting to wrap over the top. And it's really nice and it's one with that griddle top, and there you go. Anyway guys, thanks for stopping by. Had a lot of fun making this video. Um, for those of you who do not know, I have a second channel called Ballistic Burgers, and it's exclusively burgers new video once a week. I'll continue making burger videos on this channel, but it's going to be nothing but burgers over there. Um, yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Sub if you haven't, ring the bell. I'll see you in the next video. I'm kind of afraid what's going on here right now. Cold coffee, cheers.